Right then, this is it, the final video and check-in with Dan Lloyd before he tackles his half marathon. That's right, in case you've missed it, we've managed to convince Dan Lloyd from GCN to follow a nine-week training plan before doing a half marathon. Now you can also follow along and find that plan by going down to the description just below this video. Now Dan has actually impressively targeted the sub one hour 30 half marathon. He's six weeks into his plan now, so let's go find out how he's getting on. Final day of week three. So I'll be a third of the way through the training program by the end of this. And look at the weather. How amazing is that? A bit slower over this bit. Uh, 16k is easy on the cars today. Um, just strangely really looking forward to. Which is a good sign, I guess. I tell you what, it doesn't really get much better than this. But I'm incredibly lucky to live on the edge of the new forest. End of week four, and I've learned a valuable lesson. Never let Mark Froebel design your easy run. I was in Bath today for work. I don't know it all that well around here for running. I got bored of going up the Bristol Bath cycle track. So I asked Mark if he could design me a nice route. Bloody heck. I think I've gone through about 138 gates up little dirt tracks, steps. I'm on top of the world now, I think I've just done my first Everesting. <sighs> my goodness. I think I'm at the top of this hill now. I only looked at the map that he sent me on Komoot. Uh, this is the route. I should have looked at the elevation profile and the surfaces. I think he's done this on purpose. Four hours later, I'm done. Not quite that long, but it felt like it. Um, one hour 23, so that's the longest run I've ever done in terms of duration, due to the severity of Mark's route. Uh, but I felt good and comfortable, which is um, a positive. On to week five. I guess we're basically halfway through now, really, aren't we? Since the last week is the taper week to the half. So yeah, doing good. Well done everybody who's following along. Right then Dan, I am eager to find out how the last few weeks have gone and obviously how you're feeling ahead of the next few weeks and obviously the half marathon. They've gone well. I've ticked every single training session that you've set off, which I'm very happy about. And I've been feeling, I've been feeling pretty good. I say the last week I've started to feel a bit more tired because the extra volume, the biggest volume weeks that you've set, have sort of coincided with a lot of volume of work as well. There's a lot of racing on at the moment, I've been commentating at the office a lot. Um, so it's ended up getting a bit tiring from that point of view, but not too bad. Like I, I'm absolutely fine with the runs, I don't feel exhausted at the end of each one. Um, although, as you know, but I'm about to let the viewers know, I have started to get a little bit of pain in my shin on the left side. Nothing major, but just enough that I texted you yesterday and said, I think I might have shin splints. Yeah, and it, I, I mean, just to explain to viewers out there, shin splints do range. I mean, you can have very, very extreme cases where well, almost stress fractures and it's very painful pretty much 24 seven. At the moment, it sounds extremely mild. Like you've, yeah. you've let me know literally at the first instance, which is really good. Uh, essentially with shin splints at this point is it's where the muscle is in a very simplistic terms is pulling away from the shin bone and uh, a very very small amount <laughs> it's not completely ripped off don't worry but it's just um, it's important that we probably ease off now and stop just for a couple of days hopefully it'll ease off um, we'll make sure we ice it just bring that inflammation down um, I think it's just better to nip it in the bud now rather than trying to limp along for the next week couple of weeks mm. and then literally when we're meant to be doing the half marathon find that you're having to take a significant time off so hopefully we'll be able to nip it in the bud now um, and be sensible with this um, so I'm gonna advise you don't run today yeah. and take the next day or two off which is hard isn't it because like I said to you before I've ticked off every session yeah. and as an athlete you just want to make sure that you hit every single thing that's been set so you need somebody don't you to say look 
you're not going to gain too much from just doing this one extra, but you could gain a lot by not getting this shin splint even worse and therefore losing weeks and maybe even the ultimate goal of the half marathon. Yeah, and I think it's, you know, as you've highlighted, this has coincided with you, probably a very busy period of work and probably you know, sat down, not mm. stretching. I've been and sat to, down a lot. Yeah, and I know you used to do some yoga and stuff like that. So perhaps it is a case of things just got really tight and then you're suddenly trying to cram in a run at the end of the day yep. and it's just not limber already. So um, it's worth, once it's sort of settling down, starting to try and get back in that routine, obviously around your busy schedule. But um, obviously that, that was helping before. Yeah, so. yeah, I'll get back into it. Yeah, I have been just, as I said, sat down either in the car on the way to the office or in the commentary box for the most part. So and then and then squeezing the run at the end of the day. I did that 18k run. That's the longest run I've ever done in terms of distance. Um, and that oh, I was dark by the end of it. I set yeah. out from Bath here at about um, six o'clock, I think. Got back at half seven. But I was pleased with that because you know I did nine k's out on the Bath to Bristol bike track. Bike track turned around and I was able to fairly comfortably increase the pace on the way back. So I was pleased because I was getting down to sort of 4, 420, 410 towards the end and it didn't feel too bad to be That's honest. That's brilliant. I, mean, I was literally just about to ask how you're feeling about the pace because you are literally obviously hitting your target half marathon pace there at the end of a long yeah. run, um, which is brilliant because you're obviously under fatigue, um, not just from the run, but also you know cumulatively your week's volume of training as well so that's really good so are you feeling like perhaps that original 405 to 415 per kilometer is perhaps too easy maybe you're gonna well I, I i definitely think i can nail four minute k's on average the whole way um it's tough to know beyond that though because i haven't really done any kind of testing on this before i've not even done a, a, a flat out 5k or a flat out 10k so it's hard for me to know what I should set out at because in my head I might think oh one one hour 20 minutes and that's 347 I think mm, you said yeah. but what I don't want to happen is get 13 k's through at 347 absolutely blow and maybe not even get in the hour and a half so it's quite hard to know what I should set out on that day because equally if I set out at four minutes and I get to 14 15 k's and then, well I can really up this I've got a lot left and I miss out on an hour and 20 I'll also be disappointed so how do I even know where to start really well I'm you know going by what I've seen from your training and how comfortable you have been at four minute per K, I'd say we should actually start looking at something around 355 per K. Um, and as you say, perhaps get to sort of halfway through the run and assess where you're at, and then maybe in case you bump it up. Um, but yeah, like we haven't had a huge period of time here to do a 5K, do numerous tests to mm. check where you're at. You are obviously improving every week you go on. Um, and we've kind of got to pluck out what we think is the right number for you. So I'm going to sensibly say 355, and then we could potentially build from that during the run. So yeah, how do you feel about that? Well, good, yeah. But then, as I said, I'm going to be gutted if it's an hour and 21, you know, because it's a lot. It may well if you happen. start, if you start at 355, out. I've got to build up a lot from that pace to then get to an average of 3.47 for the one hour 20, haven't I? Yeah, yeah. Well, for anyone out there, if you are going after sort of a sub 130 um, half marathon, it works out roughly speaking around 96 to 98% of your threshold heart rate or threshold pace. So um, if you are trying to work out some calculations, that's sort of what you would go by. Obviously, we don't know your exact threshold pace, so we're trying to be... Well, Just judge it, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, now, in terms of kind of on the race day because we, we we're going to be doing this essentially solo i'll obviously be there yep. helping and pacing you keep me um, out of the wind yeah exactly we're blocking the wind but um we're probably going to end up doing this maybe on the bristol bath cycle path as you've done for your training um and I like, have you thought about the race day in terms of your pacing nutrition or is this no and i will admit to you that in no run in my life to this day have i taken out any fluids or any nutrition at all i, I just I know you advised me to do that, but as I said, I've kind of been squeezing it at the end of the day. I haven't got any gels near me or whatever, and I just also haven't felt like I've really needed them. My slight worry is that obviously the weather's turning a bit warmer now, and by the time that we do the actual half marathon, it could be a bit hotter, at which point I will need to take on fluids, and I've not got any practice in doing that. Well, in fairness, for a lot of your longer runs, um, which have been over an hour in length, they've been relatively, mostly steady, um, which is fine, so you're not like, churning through the carbohydrates um, so you are probably okay um, but obviously on race day um, you're going to be going for over an hour 
at a very high pace and you know essentially after sort of an hour you're potentially going to be um, depleting to yep. your glycogen stores so I would advise taking a gel or something similar so whatever you're comfortable with I assume you're you know from your racing days pretty happy yep. with gels it's a quick source of um, carbohydrates into the bloodstream there um, and I mean I am there as your uh, mobile feed station <laughs> so, uh, obviously if you were doing an organized half marathon there'd be potentially feed stations and drink stations there so I can carry water for you and hand that to you so I do think that's important because yeah. yeah it could well be a hot day in terms of the actual pacing itself and this is really important because it can be very very easy to get so carried away at the start even if you know okay I've got a whole 355 per k the adrenaline is pumping you're super motivated um now I would say to a degree you want to use that um but at the same time you don't want to overdo it so I'd say for that first sort of half a kilometer to a kilometer cap it around 348 or something around that yeah. region so you're going a little bit above pace but after that half k a kilometer and drop it straight down to 355 and settle into that pace and try and relax nicely so you just don't want to be going too hard in that first k to you know 340 335 and like you start going to the red and doing some damage yeah and then settling down and as we just said like perhaps assessing at sort of 11k in whether you can sort of start building on mm -hmm. or perhaps you want to just leave it until later maybe the final three or four k you go right okay I, i'm comfortable but yeah i'm going to build up now and that's that would be my usual tactics um and in terms of fueling during the race i'd say you probably want to take that gel on somewhere around 11 to 12 k in right so it'll be just before the hour mark i'd imagine are we going caffeine gel if you want, if you can stomach that. Well, yeah. I should probably try this before we get to the I, I would, especially with the, um, the toilet issues we were discussing <laughs> last week. What I don't want to happen on the day is what happened when we filmed for the last video where I was doing intervals and Mark had a GoPro and said, I'm just going to run ahead of you during <laughs> this interval so I can get some extra shots because it's a bit demoralising, to be honest. I'm sorry about that. But we got some good shots, though. <laughs> but you did, yeah. But I was there thinking, yeah, he's probably finding this quite tough himself, to be honest. Oh, and no, I was. You were running really well. <laughs> um, and one final thing, in terms of the weeks, leading and we've kind of touched on this before and um, we are obviously going to be dropping the volume down a couple of weeks before the event and there it, there are still some sessions in there and that's still really important if you are targeting an event you're doing your own half marathon back at home you want to still have some intensity in there because it can be very easy as you start to drop off the volume and ease off is you just become quite flat and mm. and quite lethargic so having that little bits of intensity in there increasing the recovery though between them just allows you to kind of feel fired up and ready and still dialed into that pace that you need for the yeah. day well, this is definitely something I had when I was racing. I've spoken to you this about, about this before off camera. I quickly discovered in my career that if I had a week very easy and didn't do any opening up or anything whatsoever, I'd feel very, like you said, lethargic and mm. like I had no power at all in the day. Heart rate sky high, breathing right up there straight away. So I used to end up doing almost a reasonably hard two hour ride the day before a major race just to open up. I no normally felt better doing that. Yeah, well, any final questions? No, I think you've covered it all. Good. Okay. Well, we are super excited for the next video because it will be the final video, the half marathon. So I hope you guys have tuned in. You've got involved yourself. If you haven't, you can still find that plan down below and just start it now, even if it is a little bit late. Well, there we go. I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. If so, please do give it a like, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to follow us over on social media and give us a subscribe just down below.